Hello, my name is Elliot and welcome to Blockly University. Blockly was founded in mid-March 2020 in response to the uncertainty as to whether or not the commencement would happen as planned. Initially started as a joke by Bjorn and his friend Hunter, it quickly grew into a huge community of students, faculty, and alumni contributing their memories and experiences to recreate the entire campus. I led the project as executive director and I'm proud to have the Blockly founders and staff bring you on a tour through our campus. Hey guys, I'm Nick. Um, I'll be your cameraman. And uh, I was also the uh, commencement lead uh, and the build lead. Uh, so just, just a warning, uh, because this is Blockly, we're able to do things uh, in this that we wouldn't be able to do in real life. Uh, so, you know, we'll be able to fly around and show you guys perspectives of Berkeley that you've never been able to see before. Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm a recent grad of the departments of French and MCV here. I miss campus like many of you, I'm sure. So I'll be walking with you through Blockly. So right now we are inside California Memorial Stadium. It seats 63,000 people. And when we aren't staying safer at home, the whole campus can come to games and graduation here. In fact, even though this year we couldn't gather at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, we were able to have a virtual graduation right here in its Minecraft counterpart. Now we are proud Golden Bears. So on game days, you will see the stadium flooded with blue and gold. Now we're walking through the Haas School of Business, one of the top 10 business schools in the country. The Haas campus, built in 1995, is relatively new compared to the buildings at the center of campus. Haas is one of the 14 schools and colleges that make up UC Berkeley, the others being chemistry, education, engineering, environmental design, information, journalism, law, letters and science, natural resources, optometry, public health, public policy, and social welfare. Now, oftentimes, Berkeley likes to couple business with innovation and problem solving. For instance, Haas has programs that specifically tie business with engineering or with biology. But there's so many ways to combine different interests, including joint degrees or double majors, like me. Maybe some of you have experienced this firsthand too. Hi guys, so I'm Christian and I was the community director at Blockly when we first were created. So back in, way back when, uh, when Blockly first started, uh, we realized that we needed people to help us build a campus um, shortly after because you thought to build the entire campus um, we quickly realized that there is only a few of us and it would take way longer um, especially if we wanted to get things finished by commencement so back in April we posted on Facebook that we needed help building out our campus um, before commencement and then it actually blew up way bigger than we thought it did over a thousand people were interested on the Facebook post and there's about a thousand or so who joined our discord server um, or a community that, that, that very first day. So of course, with all the people who are joining, we had to immediately filter out those who wanted to help build versus those who wanted to just spectate. Um, and those who wanted to help build, we had to filter out those as well, because um, as anybody knows, you don't really want anybody uh, bad coming on and messing up your project. So in doing that, we created a builder application to screen through everybody who was trying to apply and make sure that they were one, a Berkeley student, and they were motivated to help. And as an extra, they had some kind of Minecraft experience, but that wasn't exactly necessary. It was more just about who was interested and who wanted to build and help. And as well, we created a executive structure that day as well, um, because we needed it, to, especially to run operations and make sure everything was running smoothly uh, as the project progressed. So as we went through Haas there, a weird fact about this area is that it was actually one of the later buildings that was finished due to its abnormal shape and color. You may notice that the blocks that are used are much darker than the real life Haas building, and that was mainly because of aesthetics. So in Minecraft, there's a very limited amount of blocks that we can use. Um, so the builders decided to go with a darker color and a dark roof that looked more natural and it looked better overall, and it definitely fits in well with our build. Hey guys, Nick again. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do some flying here, uh, something we can do here, and show off Maxwell Field, which, uh, as many of you know, we use uh, during our football season for a whole variety of things, including tailgates for all of our fans. As you can see, it's somewhat tilted against the like grid of Minecraft, and that was a critical placement thing that we had to uh, handle during construction. This is one of many, many examples where we had to really take into very careful account the fact that uh, you know, the world is not perfect and Minecraft is not a perfect representation of it. 
Um, the other thing I want to show you off, show off as we head up Piedmont here is the Greek theater, which this is actually our fourth version of it. Uh, the original version was 45 degrees tilted from this one. We had one that was twice the size. And uh, then we had our final version, which was used for our music festival that we hosted after graduation. Uh, you can still see it's decorated there for a different event, which I'll talk about later. So right now we're walking through Piedmont Avenue. And actually, a fun fact about it is that it's one of the original pieces of campus from when it opened in 1868. The original curving path that goes between Gailey and Dwight is actually a California historical landmark. So we're coming up on Foothill, one of our dorms on the north side. Many students this semester have elected to reside outside of campus to practice physical distancing. But if you were on campus, you'd normally have your pick of Foothill, Stern, our dorm for women identifying folks, and off screen because they are all on south side. Units 1, 2, and 3, Clark Kerr, and Blackwell Hall are newest dorm. Certain buildings in these dorms also have floors dedicated to intersectional communities, and dorm perks include academic centers, res hall events, small rec rooms, and dining plans that give you access to four buffets near each dorm and on-campus shops. Hi, so I'm Christian back again. So as you go into the mining circle area of campus, this was actually one of the very first areas that was completed on Blockly. So as you may guess, a lot of our uh, a lot of our builder team was initially uh, just mainly STEM majors. So this is one of the very few areas that we were very familiar with. So of course, every STEM major knows um, the mining building, they know Evans, they know Stanley, uh, as well as the chemistry buildings behind us. So it was very, very interesting seeing this is the first area, especially considering it was the furthest or one of the further ones from the stadium. However, as our community blew up in popularity, our builder demographic became much more diverse and brought with it people who knew much different parts of campus. So all of the humanities majors, all the other students who weren't necessarily STEM, but knew different areas of campus were able to add in and add their touch to the different buildings that we as STEM students may not have known as well. Hey, I'm on Nowhere. I worked on some of the technical parts of Blockly and some visual effects. I'm sure you all know about the Campanile. It's an iconic and historic feature of our campus. Every hour, the bells sound out their distinctive tones to students across the campus and syncs everyone together throughout the day. For our recreation, we wanted to make this as faithful a representation of the iconic tower as possible. We went through three different iterations of the tower before settling on our final design, and there were many small touch-ups along the way. You can even find our friendly Peregrine Falcon family nesting on top of the tower just by the Carolyn Bells. We've even created clock faces that update as the time goes on, and bells that ring each hour, perfectly synced with Berkeley's time. They can even be heard across the campus in-game, using genuine audio from the original Carolyn Bells. Uh, we hope that this will give visitors a very familiar feeling of being back on campus again. While you're there, don't forget to say hi to Oski. <laughs> Hey guys, Nick again. So, uh, so something I want to point out while we're up here, uh, one of the more famous parts about the view, at least for, for me, was uh, being able to see this little sign on top of McCone Hall that reads NOPE originally. Uh, we actually decided, uh, we actually modified ours so that it reads HOPE. Uh, that was mostly because someone reached out to us on Instagram and they, 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 they thought that it always read hope. And we thought that was actually a really cool message that we could have for Blockly. And it's kind of become like a, a, a minor symbol for us for just anything and everything that we do. Um, we, we kind of use this as a small little logo. Here we have South Hall. It seems a little out of place amongst the Beaux-Arts buildings in the area, but that's because it was built in 1873, and it is the only surviving building from the original campus. South Hall has been home to various facilities and departments over the years, but right now it houses the School of Information, which runs Berkeley's graduate programs in information management and systems, data science, and cybersecurity. Now, all around Berkeley's campus, there are statues of bears, because, you know, we're proud to be bears. And South Hall has the smallest bear statue on campus, just on the railing of the balcony above the entrance. Yeah, so that was the real South Hall. Our version of South Hall, um, actually, I originally constructed a version of it um, early on in uh, early on in the build. Um, but this version of uh, South Hall was actually built by one of our builders who went by Creeper. Now, 
the coolest thing about him and the coolest thing about the structure is that he was actually uh, waitlisted at Cal and ended up coming because of his work on uh, Blockly. So we always like to tie him around and say that he was uh, like he, he came to Berkeley because he first came to Blockly. Uh, also, just to briefly talk about our build method, because I'm sure you're curious. Uh, so we actually used uh, like real world like elevation and ma uh, and uh, like layouts of the buildings to figure out the exact dimensions of just the just the, like the footprints of everything. And once we were happy with where all the footprints were being placed, we selected a palette that best represented the the overall design of whatever building we were looking at. And then we built uh, the walls, ceiling, and then eventually interiors for all the buildings, very carefully looking at reference images from students, uh, Google Earth, Google Street View, and anything else we can get our hands on. All right, so hi guys, I'm Christian again. And as we head to Dill Library, one of the current projects that Blockly is working on right now is actually being added to the digital archives of the Bancroft Library. So about a month or so after the graduation event, Bancroft Library actually reached out to us and asked if we were interested in being added to their digital collection. So of course, we accepted. So right now we're currently collecting as many materials as possible to be stored and uh, hopefully referenced to later on. So that includes our map, that includes any pictures that we've had taken of our campus, whether it was progress or not, um, as well as any skins or any useful um, little memes or anything that could be referenced and documented later on. So as we go into the in-game library here, you can see that it's actually very detailed in the little parts that are uh, added into it, such as the reading room here. So interiors are actually relatively difficult to replicate inside of Minecraft because in Minecraft, there's a certain scale to how detailed a space can be. So things like chairs or tables or computers are actually really hard to replicate without an additional add-on or such as a plugin. So to solve that issue, what we did was exactly as I mentioned just now, we added a plugin which add these little models of the chairs. You can see the the laptop monitors or um, or like some of the lanterns actually have um, custom custom models that allow us to add more detail into our builds. We are now at the center of campus, Doe Library. We have 24 libraries on campus, and depending on what atmosphere you prefer, there are plenty to pick from. Doe is perhaps what one might imagine of a traditional college library, with these high vaulted ceilings and historic tables and chairs like we see in the North Reading Room. This room specifically was built in 1910, with restorations in 2005. Doe Library is also home to the Morrison Memorial Library and our four-story underground library that we affectionately call Mainstacks. Now, while we're here, I also want to mention some Berkeley superstitions, because we have quite a few of them. We have 4.0 Hill, we have the Memorial Glade Seals. And aptly for where we are standing, there's one about the likeness of Athena that hangs over the Memorial Glade entrance to Doe Library. It's said that if you walk through that door to study, Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, will bless your studies and you will do well on your exam. But if you walk out of that same door and you turn your back at her, she'll curse you and your grades. So to avoid getting cursed, some people do their best to find another exit out of the library, or they'll just walk out of the door backwards. We wanted to honor all of the people who helped build our campus from the ground up. From what began as a barren field, our team of over 200 builders recreated our entire campus from scratch. We dedicated our recreation of the builder wall at Doe Memorial Library, where the real-life builders of Berkeley are memorialized, to crediting each and every one of our builders virtually in Minecraft. So you can find each and every builder's username on these walls. So now that we're heading out of Doe Library, uh, we're going to be heading towards Moffat Library, which um, we didn't really ever tell anyone to build. The building, the building procedures for us were actually very casual. We would just have people build whatever they want, what they wanted to, so long as we kept on schedule. The interior of this entire library is built just by a couple of students, just kind of on a day. Um, as you can see, it's very, very detailed um, uh, with ha with the most recent or how it looks nowadays with the more recent renovations that were made a few years back. As I mentioned earlier, we have a ton of libraries on campus to choose from. One of them is Moffat Library, which is actually connected to Doe through the underground library main stacks. Moffat was just renovated a couple years ago, and part of that renovation has given us a noise floor on the fourth floor, designed for collaboration and group study, and a quiet floor on the fifth floor, complete with nap pods. Downstairs, Moffat are media labs, classrooms, and the free speech movement cafe, 
so students can study indoors or out. All right, now we're going to be heading down to VLSB. Uh, as you can see, this was actually also built by, uh, by Creeper in a single day. He built this entire structure. It was really amazing. Hello, everyone. I'm Nya, another Blockly builder for the server. So we worked very hard to try to keep Blockly as up-to-date with the in-real-life UC Berkeley campus as possible. The entire process of recreating the campus took months, and whenever changes occurred on campus, we did our best to reflect that virtually as well. For instance, we renamed this VLSB extension as Vial Hall after that change occurred in real life. VLSB in general is a great example of how we had to use both our creativity and the specific building tools at our disposal in order to find a workaround for the more ornate carvings and buildings on campus. If a building had complex pictures or intricate carvings or even subtle linings around the walls, we had to consider how to best reflect that with Minecraft's blocks. Now this building is home to my biology major. Valley Life Sciences Building, more commonly called VLSB, because we really like acronyms at Berkeley, is one of our natural sciences buildings. It was built in 1930 and has general classrooms, but upstairs is where the biology labs and advising are. It also houses the Museum of Paleontology, and there is a T-Rex skeleton standing at the center of a three-floor spiraling staircase. Berkeley is a research university with opportunities for undergrads to engage with that research. Campus-wide, there is the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, which partners faculty and researchers with undergrads looking to get their foot into research. And these can cover various topics, from cell biology to social behavior to app design. Aside from campus-wide research programs, sometimes departments have their own research programs as well, not to mention the honors programs, where seniors can conduct original research and present their theses. So we just walked through uh, through the largest of the VLSB lecture halls. Uh, the interior was, I think, also done by Creeper. So kudos to him. All right. Now that we're kind of starting to head towards Say There over here, I just want to talk about all the events we've done on Blockly. The first and the biggest one that I'm sure many of you know about is that we hosted the unofficial commencement uh, with support of the university. Um, here on our campus, um, we had seven speakers, including the chancellor and one of our vice chancellors, um, as well as major CEOs and some very, very significant figures in the world of Minecraft. Um, uh, additionally, we hosted the Berkeley High graduation here uh, in our own Greek theater. They reached out to us uh, asking to do that. Um, and we are working on a version of Blockly from 1893 so that people can really walk around and truly experience what this campus was like over 100 years ago. Um, our most recent event was actually hosting a BLM protest uh, where... Um, where we had people who were too afraid of the virus to go out or just wanted to protest in a way that they felt was safe, mostly kids. We had a lot of young kids join us, um, which, of course, is very fitting for the Berkeley campus. So as Nick has touched on, part of the color of Berkeley is its famous political protests. This stems from the Free Speech Movement, or FSM, that took place in 1964. Students peacefully protested via lock-ins, rallies, their rights for free speech on campus. We were the first campus to have free speech protected. And because of this, Berkeley, particularly Sprout Plaza and Sather Gate, are historic spots to hold protests. Now, this is Sather Gate right here, our famous gateway to the campus. It was originally an actual gateway right at the southern edge of campus when it was completed in 1910. But over time, the campus expanded and we got Sprout Plaza. Maybe spend time in this area taking tens of photos before you or your students started first semester. Alums, maybe you were flying for a club you were in. Or you were on your way to class trying to avoid flowering, lest you be tardy. Accompanied by lunchtime acapella performances, passing through Sather Gate meant engaging in not just academics, but also the broader campus life. In this part of campus, we can also access student services. The Student Learning Center, shout out to anyone who is an LEP, Educational Opportunity Program, Transfer Center, Disabled Students Program, Student Parent Center, and Gen X Center, all of these are in the Sprout area. Not to mention the ASUC and Graduate Assembly, our student government bodies. Cal Student Central, where you might have gone to request transcripts or resolve financial aid issues, Amazon Lockers, and the Multicultural Center. This area is a hub for students to study, eat food, and just generally hang out. So the other thing I want to say about our, our Sather Gate, uh, so of course, well, uh, the original one was built over, over a century ago, uh, ours was modeled uh, in like uh, like April uh, by one guy. We had a single guy do this beautiful 3D modeling of Sather Gate, and then we had him we had it implemented in game. Uh, it's probably one of the probably one of the nicest parts of campus. And uh, yeah, we just had so many builders who had a lot of very unique skills that they applied to the incredible things that we ended up creating here in Blockly. 
So as we head on to Sproul Plaza here, as you can imagine with the diverse community that we had to build the campus, people representing a bunch of clubs came on to add their little touch. You can see that in much of our touch here on Sproul Plaza where there's a bunch of tables uh, advertising their clubs just like you would see in real life. There's so much more detail that are added onto these booths, it's amazing. Like from my opinion, you can see a, a rocket ship there and you would never see that in real life, which is just purely amazing to me. There's a bunch of little details scattered throughout just these tables alone, you could spend hours just looking through and finding what's new. So then as we're walking through the middle of the plaza here, I'd like to mention that if you would like to support Blockly and our future projects, or if you just enjoyed this video, please donate via our Patreon. There's a donation button linked to us on this page. And if you would like to stay updated with us on our projects, check us out on social media under Blockly or Blockly Official on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and more. All right, guys, Nick here. Um, I do want to thank everyone for coming to Blockly. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and finish off the tour by taking a quick walk down Telegraph. Um, this is one of the many continued parts of the tour, continued parts of expanding campus, you know, because Berkeley is so much more than just campus to the students and alumni. Uh, I thought we might as well end the tour by uh, finishing off at one of the more famous stops along Telegraph Avenue, Pappy's. Pappy's shares its name with Coach Pappy Waldorf, one of Cal's most beloved coaches. During his 10 years as a coach of the Golden Bears, we won 10 seasons, and we went to three consecutive Rose Bowls. There's a statue of Pappy near the faculty club on the southeast part of campus. It's a tradition that on game days, because the statue is facing a second statue of a tree nymph, students will blindfold his eyes to ensure that Pappy is not distracted and is staying focused on the game. Thanks, Ava. I want to thank you all for coming again, and uh, thank Ava and all of our other speakers for joining us on this wonderful tour of Blockly, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your homecoming week. Anyone want to go in?